Okay, let, let's keep it going then. If it's going to be flat, we can. 150, 200 yeah. meters. Just before it starts to pick up again, and okay. yeah, like in the, within the next hundred meters, we're going to want to collect at probably at least a couple of rocks okay. from the same spot. Cool. To um, kind of hedge our bets, we only have two rocks so far, and um, we want to make sure we have enough material, datable material, from those rocks, and. Someone who can tell you more about that is sitting to my left. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, what, what kind of rocks are we looking for, geology? Uh, well, we're mostly looking for angled rocks uh, that are not very altered or covered with uh, ferromanganese crust, which, as you know, is going to be a very difficult task. Um, from what I've seen, only about 15% of uh, rocks on certain cruises are actually datable. Uh, so it's um, important for us to try to find uh, optimal rocks that we can use uh, that have the uh, datable phases uh, for age determinations. So why angular rocks? Uh, angular rocks are less likely to have uh, pervasive phosphoritic alteration, uh, also a little less likely to have feral manganese crust. Um, yeah, uh, less weathered, essentially. Cool. We call those the candy corn rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because they taste awful. <laughs> <laughs> rocks do, uh, geologists do taste rocks occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although there was that, that news uh, that came out not too long ago that uh, it was earlier this year that um, uh, the nodules like those in the CCZ are, contain radioactive elements. Mm. Is that... Did you hear that news? I have it. Yeah. Thanks. Anyway, the iron manganese crust contains radioactive uh, elements, but you know, so does seawater, right? Sure. So, no more tasting, no uh, more tasting, tasting menus. Yeah, we're gonna have to have a <laughs> SOP about not tasting rocks. <laughs> so the sponge in the foreground is called Polyopagon. It's a, uh, it's um, a family. Uh, um, Ferronomatidae is the family. Polyopagon, it's very characteristic of these depths, deep 2,000 plus meters. It has been extensively collected in this area, so um, it hasn't really been worked on, so I can't give you a species name, but I know we've collected it in years past. Steve, about how many different I know that you said that sponges are vastly understudied right now, but how many species would you estimate or would you guess that there are of sponges and I coral too? I don't know, but I can tell anyone who wants to look that up where to find it. Um, if you go to the World Register of Marine Species or Worms, um, it's a database that scientists use to um, basically get updated on the latest taxonomy of a lot of animals uh, that live in the ocean and it'll show you exactly what the uh, existing species are sometimes certain groups have uh, extinct species as well or fossilized uh, you know individuals um, or individuals that are described from fossilized material paleontological material um, on the yeah, it's um, like so a little terrace, but yeah, yeah it could be a little. Ferronomatidae. About 200, well, this but is... But in this area, for glass sponges, there's probably some somewhere on the order of maybe about two or three hundred species um, within that group. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's horizontal. But it should just be a little terrace, and then we'll start going up slope again. Yeah, this, uh, this, uh, this little promontory that kind of jutted out from the side of the seamount was was more substantial than what it looked like on the bathymetry, which was interesting. Is that angular enough for you, or is that <laughs> crusted? That looks pretty nice. I'm just, just not, not saying anyone in particular, we're just kind yeah. of having the discussion. Is that another squat lobster on that sponge? Oh, is it? Yeah, I guess it is.
Well, it doesn't seem like, I mean, it's tough to tell until you actually touch the rock, but it looks like this yeah. is, you know, this whole slope is a potential target rich mm -hmm. environment. Well, we're, uh, sorry? We're actually at four meters left of the move, so we could stop here and pick something up. Um, it'd also be a good time to let the vehicles catch up. Yeah, so I'm gonna pass the uh, Telestrator Stylus of Science to uh, Nick here. Oh, big moment. And he is going to lead the geology collection. Thank you. <laughs> uh, when we're stopped, usually back here. Oh, relative that to the ship? Too, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we've been having Atalanta and Herc. The so Herc forward. The lasers are right here, so this is 10 centimeters. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Probably more like here. Yeah. It uh, maybe, uh, I don't know if this rock over here is too large uh, for the grabber. Yeah. Right on the lasers, yeah, said center. Right there. That big rock, okay. That one, that's a possibility too. Yeah. But we'll, uh, we'll we're just gonna have to just touch it and, and see how it looks. If it's not good, then we'll have to move. Um, yeah. Looks like it might be connected to the rest of the basalts. They all look like they're loose until you actually get yeah. up there, yeah. But there's a, 70 million years of crust accumulation on these, probably. So sorry, it's this big one just right in front. Okay. Yeah. That's a possibility as well. You're talking about this one right here? That actually looks a little bit more angular. There you oh, go. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yoink. So this is NA one five three dash sample number ten zero one zero. Zero one zero, Roger. Yep. Uh, we're gonna have to go to the starboard box, I think. Yeah. Um, what's open? Data? Yeah. Let's, uh, no. Yeah, let's, um, let's do A, B, or D on the starboard box. If, yeah. We can, we, we can double up in, yeah, we can double up in E. So we have a rock in E already, which is the forward outboard component. And um, we'll just have to make a note that this one is, is more elongate um, and angular, and it has a, a very, um, uh, a, set of, a pretty heavy sediment drape on the top side of it. And uh, when we put it in the box, mm -hmm. it'll also probably be on top, um, on, on top of another rock. That's fine. Uh, what would you say the size of that rock is, just uh, by judging? Yeah, 15, 20 centimeters, maybe, yeah. Longer than it is wide and, uh, you know, a fairly heavy sediment drape. There's a small Xenophia for, uh, it looks like a, that's a, a protist right there mm -hmm. on the top, so that could be used to identify the rock as well. Xenophile fours. That's another that's another world. So so far we have collected a squat lobster. I believe this is the first rock we've collected this dive and number three. Oh, excuse me, number three. This is the third rock we've collected this time. And then also we got a, a 
Niskin bottle full of a water sample to collect some eDNA. So once we have all these uh, samples, we bring them all up to the surface and then what's the next step? It goes to the wet lab? Yeah, so the plan is when vehicles come back on deck, we will um, have sample uh, containers prepared for them, chilled seawater uh, as needed. Um, and then we will take the samples off the vehicle in a very systematic way, such to preserve their integrity as much as possible. Um, we'll refrigerate them while we work on them and process them, taking images and documenting their uh, no noteworthy features so that they can be later uh, housed in repositories. Um, a lot changes between the mm -hmm. ship and the repository. For example, when we put animals in, in alcohol to preserve them, uh, they may lose their color, so it's important to get those uh, live um, in life, you know, uh, coloration patterns and characteristics, and then with the rocks, we'll probably cut them open. I have a question about the uh, uh, change in uh, properties uh, when you're at depth versus at sea level. Do you see any different color changes or any other physical changes? Not so much. Um, yeah, it, as long as the, the temperature, for biology, as long as the temperature of the water is cool or cold, um, they don't degrade very much, but uh, animals will often start to mucus depending on what they are as the temperature changes. But as long as the temperature you're is consistent, here, they can be kept alive this. for so sometimes I think you're many minutes or days. Rock it. <laughs> yeah, when we sat down, I'll, I'll reset the cursor. Yeah. Look at all that marine snow. Cool. Mm. So we have some folks that are wondering how large is that rock sample okay. that we just okay. collected? That looks more accurate, right? Yeah. You have an idea, Nick? Yeah, I think uh, we were estimating between 15 to 20 centimeters. All right. <laughs> so again, um, we do have those laser beams that you can see. Um, and and do like a spin so that they can see each of the sides of the rock, just image each of the sides of the rock. Science, do you want lasers on the rock as well? Uh, yeah, if you can. And then, it, yeah, rotate it. That's just mud, I think, on the bottom side. Yeah. A little bit of pelagic sediment on yeah. the bottom. Sometimes if there's any uh, iron oxidation, we note that down, too. That helps identify it. But it looks like a good sample. I think we should stow it. We're ready. We got enough images? Cool. Let's stow it in starboard bio box, compartment E. Okay. E, is that forward or aft? Forward. Okay. On the outboard side. There's already a rock in there, but we can put it right on top. Okay. Big rock, little rock? Uh, flat rock. Okay, awesome. So <laughs> uh, when you're ready, we can switch to uh, sample uh, view. Um, sample macro, salvo, and you'll be able. To, we'll have the side views much bigger. Uh, let me get you one more camera here. Uh, and starboard and port light are off right now. Uh, you may not even want them on because they blow everything out, but we can try it. All right. So thanks. I kind of like them off. Um, do you want to try them on? Um, You're going for this. This. Those from, okay, yeah. perfect. All right, thank you. Samantha, just a reminder, if you have time to talk about navigation. Could, I, could we have sure. them on for a second? Say again? Could we have them on for a second? Lovely, thank you. 
Yeah, once we get a, another ship move in. Happy to answer that question. All right. Thank you. Beauty. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So that should be pretty easy to tell apart. One is on top of the other, and uh, the second one is, is the sample number 10. That other sample is getting this kind of getting squished. Oh, the coral? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's okay. It's too big anyway. Um, it's okay. It's, sometimes it happens when we have an unruly coral branch, one, you know, branch sticks out or so, but mm -hmm. we have the whole colony there, so we, it's not a huge loss if we lose a branch or, or so. going in the direction we were going before. Great, be that. <laughs> Are we ready to keep moving? Roger. So I see we have some friends visiting from Michigan, welcome. Um, we are expecting to be diving for several more hours. Um, we are slowly making our way up this guillot here uh, near Johnston Atoll. This is um, a previously unexplored guillot. It has been mapped, but not explored with a, with an ROV. So uh, again, the current depth is about um, 1,964 meters. And I think we're gonna be making our way slowly up the slope of this guillot. Start again? Keep yeah, doing let's the same go. thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go on. Um, okay, we're ready to go. Happy. Bridge, Nev. Let's do another three zero meters, two six zero. I think it, I think it is. Um, yeah. I'm kind of I'm I'm enjoying getting the hang of the crafts. Um, Th that was on nuanced. Rob's watch last night. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure they Mm -hmm. Got that done. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's pretty standard for Dopplers. So some of you might be wondering what exactly okay. is a guillot? Um, I've been saying that word a lot, and essentially it's, a, mm -hmm. it's an underwater okay. mountain. Um, it's also known as a sea mount, and usually they have a flat top. So, Nick, is there a particular reason why we're looking for rocks along, or at this guillot, instead of mm -hmm. just along the regular ocean floor? I was wondering why are, what is the significance of looking for um, rocks along a guillot rather than just on the flat bottom of the ocean? Okay. Yeah, uh, I'd be happy to yeah. answer that question. So guillots are uh, essentially seamounts that have not uh, penetrated the surface of uh, 
the ocean or have been eroded and subsided uh, beneath the ocean over time. Uh, and they are often expressions of uh, mantle plume derived material, uh, which is what we're uh, often looking for uh, for uh, age progressive hotspot tracks. Um, they're not always um, uh, created from hotspots. It can be occasionally um, extensional volcanism or uh, uh, different types of decompression melting, but um, these particular uh, seamounts and guillotes that we're looking at are assumed to be mantle plume derived, uh, and we can use that to kind of reconstruct um, plate tectonic history. Cool. So it just gives you more information about potentially what it used to look like maybe millions of years ago. Yeah. Um, we need we need a reference plane uh, when we're reconstructing lithospheric plates, mm -hmm. and uh, they're rel they're fixed relative to uh, uh, plate mm -hmm. migration. So we know that plates move over time, uh, kind of like a uh, convective oven, and uh, to track the direction and velocity of the plates, we're going to have to kind of uh, have that reference frame reference frame and uh, hotspot tracks uh, are, are perfect uh, for that for that purpose. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to be asking a lot of rock questions. I don't know. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I know next to nothing about rocks except that they're hard and sometimes they're pretty. Most times they're pretty. <laughs> and sometimes they taste good apparently. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they taste salty. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Brittany, an answer to the question about uh, Yay. how do you end up as a navigator? Yes. Um, very different paths for everyone who's in this seat. Um, some folks, um, so on Nautilus, it's a little different role in that navigators who work with the ROV team um, and the bridge is a connection between the, the two places um, also are mappers when we're doing seafloor mapping. So it's kind of a dual role. So we, a lot of the folks who come in as navigators um, start off their mm -hmm. studies or career as seafloor mappers. It's kind and of then coming down a slope and then going up a slope, so there's a saddle in the middle. And then um, kind of train into the navigator role. Um, other people will do um, GIS programs um, or have perhaps experience in like sonar um, as a sonar technician, maybe through the Navy. Um, yeah, those are just a few of the different career pathways that um, the folks in this role have had. Um, we also yeah. have US Coast Guard and uh, US Naval Academy interns out. So those are um, a couple of different places that our navigators come from. Um, my background is a little different. I have a political science degree <laughs> uh, and I did communications uh, for for OET um, before moving into operations. So I had totally like on the job training um, for this role. Um, but if you go onto the Nautilus Live website and hit the team button, um, you'll see in addition to everyone on watch and on the ship right now, um, you'll see profiles about the different roles and you can learn more about the different um, roles on Nautilus and Maybe the career pathways that, that can yeah, land so you we're there. Yeah, kind of right here. Okay, right now. Well, uh, a little bit closer Excellent. to here. Excellent. Thanks so much, Samantha. Yep. So this is a nice glass sponge, uh, Euplectelid, probably Regadrella is what they were calling this earlier. Beautiful. Yeah. In the foreground, there's a, looks to be a bubblegum coral, possibly, yep, with a zoanthid associate. Uh, and then on the left hand side, there was a black coral in the middle there, possibly one of those Parentopathies colonies, and then in the, just to the top left of that there was an Aridogorgia uh, up a little bit. Yeah, Aridogorgia. Yeah. Yeah. What's there behind the Aridogorgia? The, that little nubbin? Yeah. Yeah, that's a black coral, black coral. Parentopathies. Yeah what we're going to call parentopathies. Uh, like, like sponges, there's been a lot of black corals collected here, but, um, but there's still work that needs to be done on some of the existing collections. 
Yeah, yeah, that looks like the, a bubblegum coral with uh, zoanthid. Yep, Paragorgia. And then Aridogorgia. I was, the, one of the things that we have been keeping an eye out for um, that we would normally see in these kind of, so we're entering a bit of a saddle kind of between the promontory topographic high of waypoint four and then it dips down and then before going up again and there's this ex there's this channel of sediment in the saddle and um, one of the things that Rob was remarking last night is that on these seamounts we sometimes see they're, they're not nodules but we're going to call them nuggets of um, <laughs> crusty uh, crusty gravel and uh, we didn't see that here which was interesting to note so suggest there's some other forces uh, affecting where those types mm -hmm. of structures form. And the ship just completed a move. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so Gabby, the ship just completed a move, but I'll let you guys catch up a little bit before we keep running. This looks like a sheet flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Unless it got happy to really keep steep going. all of a sudden. Okay. Science, anything we want to stop and look at here? No, let's keep it rolling. Cool. Bridge nav. Uh, point two. Uh, we can do, let's do five zero meters, two six zero. Five zero. Yeah, that's a cracked sheet flow. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at these sheet flows where uh, essentially seeing effusive lava flows with a higher eruption uh, rate than a pillow basalt, uh, which will be much slower. Polyopagon sponge, glass sponge. They're just very nice to take pictures of. It's kind of like a giant marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go on. Would you say that one is still alive or is it yeah, that one looks to be alive. Okay. Yeah. What is and so the kind of greenish brown stuff growing on is like just algae, probably. Yeah, accumulation of phyto phytodetritus or marine snow. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. Phytodetritus. Phytodetritus. I've not heard that term before. Phytodetritus. So <laughs> everyone knows that um, photosynthesis primarily happens in the surface ocean, but as you um, as that material falls through the water column and degrades, it uh, flock. Uh, it becomes like flocculent and sticks together, yeah, <laughs> flock. <laughs> um, and uh, over time, that marine snow, you know, aggregates, and it's primarily, you know, perhaps phytoplankton debris, bacteria, um, bits of, you know, mucus and, you know, animal DNA of some type. And over time, that accumulates on the seafloor. Um, in certain areas more than others, if you remember, or longtime watchers, some of our work off of the West Coast in California, it can it can form uh, very dense, um, you know, phytodetrital layers on the seafloor. But here, it's it takes much much longer to accumulate because the sedimentation rate is so much lower. So, Steve, while we're on this cruise, is there a specific type of coral that we're necessarily looking for? Or just any and all coral is good. Um, we're we're equal opportunity here, so we're um, <laughs> kind of looking for all corals. Oh, that, this might be those uh, mm. manganese nuggets. Well, they're, they're, I wouldn't even call that a bed. I would call that just like debris. Yeah, you know, it's not. It doesn't look to have any structure, and it's on the slope. Um, yeah, all kinds of corals, really. We're just trying to get a handle on uh, what are characteristic species we find at certain depths that we dive at and hopefully sample some of them that are maybe undersampled uh, or have been seen in the past and, and haven't been collected yet. Um, despite us having this immense capacity to bring ROVs down to the seafloor, it's, it's impossible to collect everything mm -hmm. in one go. Uh, so these repeated expeditions are very valuable to uh, enhance our collections. Thank 
you, Steve. And observations, not just all collections, but right. a lot of the, the, there haven't been any coral species that have been described from, from photo and video yet, but, um, but some other groups, like there's been a, at least a jellyfish that's been described, or yeah, a jellyfish. No, tinafor, sorry. Um, that's been s uh, described using photos based on ocean exploration uh, cruises that have happened in the past. Very controversial. Very controversial process in the community. What process is that? Sorry. Describing uh, animal taxa based on photo and video records only. Oh, no kidding. Oh, you need the actual specimen. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, when we collect something and it's the first of a new species, it's called the type. And if we don't have a type, we don't have a reference to what that thing is. Um, and so it kind of creates some potential for uncertainty down the road. Okay, go wide video. So that was a Bersinged sea star, um, and then Ophiuroid brittle stars down the stalk of that dead sponge. Bersingids are related to sea stars you might see in the intertidal zone. Uh, same group, but so Bersingids are deep water. Looks like that just ran away. Um, if it runs, if the tilt motor runs away like that, is that what just happened? It yeah. just did something you didn't want it to do? You can cycle power on it. It does do that occasionally. Okay. There's another, another one of those wishbone uh, sponge oh, stocks. Oh, yeah. 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 Probably a sponge. Can we zoom on fish? Oh. Oh, yeah. I like fish. Video, I'll set, video yeah. I'll set you up for that. Cool. We're taking bets. Is this a cuskill? Go for zoom. What do you think, Steve? Uh, it's tough yeah. to tell from... Uh, yeah, just, I need his head, don't I? Yeah, we need to cycle around a little bit. Okay, go wide. I'll see if I can sneak up on him. <laughs> is that a sea cucumber next to it? It it's is, beautiful. it is. Beautiful. Oh, go for might have a turn around here. Nope, just backwards. He's going backwards. Interesting maneuver. <laughs> go wide. I, s I still think one of these days rather than having like a nice fish identification guide, I'm just going to make a, an <laughs> identification guide based on fish butt shots. Yep. <laughs> well, that was that's class that's usually what we get. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that was, that was tough to tell, but it, it looked like a cusk eel based on the, the, the caudal fin, um, but it couldn't tell you much more than that. Go for zoom. Beautiful uh, glass sponge. Yeah. So this move is about to wrap up. You want to keep moving? Um, uh, I'm set to keep moving. Yes. If video cool. or science does. Great. Bridge nav. Aye, aye. This is a... Let's add another five zero meters, two six zero. video. Okay, go ahead. I'm just looking up the ID on this. It's only been a year. I haven't committed all the sponges to memory yet. <laughs> <laughs> Bolosoma. There we go. Oh, yeah. Bolosoma. Bolosoma. I'll write that in the chat. You pluck tell it. I was wondering if we could zoom in on this black rock in the center here. Uh, can you? Yes. Mm. Uh, there you go. There it is. Can yeah. you? Uh, yes. Okay. Great. Yes, Please. absolutely. Go for zoom. It's a boulder. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. we're not getting that one. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we can admire it from a yeah. distance. <laughs> <laughs> Looks, looks are free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, awesome. Go wide. Looks 
Look, and that sponge zoom was awesome. Those sponges are hard because they like blow out the camera, and yeah. getting that focus is really hard because they got the, all those little details. But it looked awesome. Thank you. It's not that we haven't collected rocks like that before. It's just it's, it's <laughs> discouraged. You know? Well, we don't have any porch space now. Yeah, if yeah. we had porch space, we could talk. <laughs> <laughs> or dredge. <laughs> well, I think the uh, we have to we have to do some record keeping on that because I think. I know that one of the biggest rocks we ever collected was 70 or 80 pounds, somewhere in that range. Wow. Was that that big slab? It might have, it, it, it was um, the Papahanamoka cruise um, a couple years ago in 20, mm. 2021. Yeah. So what was the reasoning behind getting that humongous slab of rock? <laughs> Ego. Ego. <laughs> That's ego. It's amazing bragging rights. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was hoping that was the answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a really authentic answer. Really <laughs> Nothing but transparency over here. No, uh, I mean, well, this is a good question. So can you hedge your bets on having datable material by just getting a bigger rock or, or can you find really altered rock in really large boulders too? That's a good question. Um, I've definitely worked on bigger rocks that uh, were uh, completely useless at the end of the day as far as uh, age dating. Uh, we could still get chemistry, other chemistry, um, which might help classify the rock. Uh, if uh, there's similar samples from, let's say, a hotspot uh, track that's uh, hundreds or thousands of kilometers away, um, based off of their uh, isotope uh, genetic makeup, genetic in quotes um, but yeah um, age constraints are the uh, optimal form of analysis mm -hmm. well, we look to be starting to head up slope again so there's sure. sure might find some bridge no? on this uh, cold position so science we are starting to head up slope as you just commented. Do you want to collect any more rocks here? I would love that. We're stopping the ship, so now is the time. All right. Oh, there's an umbellopathies, black coral. Cemented pillow basalt. Well, we might have science interested in a rock. I don't see anything that would be recoverable. Maybe we can not. we can poke and prod if we yeah. uh, once we settle out. The poke of science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before it turns into a sheet flow. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a densely packed rock with sponge. Yeah, a little, yep. Mm -hmm. I wonder why all on that one little rock. I think it's probably because it's a, it, 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 that rock is kind of up at an angle, so this probably mm -hmm. has accelerated current flows around it. Mm -hmm. Over it. This is a nice little sheet flow here. Mm -hmm. That isn't just a piece of rock on top of the sheet flow, is it? Could be. You can always poke at it. Is it of interest? <laughs> it's pretty big. You can always poke at it. The poke of science. We don't. We don't have another large box okay. space. Yeah. <laughs> We're okay. looking for something that fits in in the small compartments A, B, and D, ideally. Um, so that's you know maybe 15 centimeters maximum diameter. Yeah. Okay. We any can take multiples, though. Any assistance on finding the right size would be greatly appreciated since this is my first mm -hmm. uh, expedition. It's hard to kind of gauge the rock sizes uh, just by looking at the camera. Yep. 
Sometimes it depends on how the rock's oriented too. Sometimes you can get a longer rock to fit in there, but. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna kind of do another little wedge out. So if you look to the left, is there more rubble? Or is this now just sheet flow? This might be lava tubes. This way? Okay. Bridge, no? Uh, two zero meters, two six zero. Of sediment. And yeah, I'm surprised. Maybe this is not as well current swept as the lower parts of the seamount. No, certainly not. So, Steve, um, in general, coral and sponges are pretty slow growing organisms, right? Are there any species that are anomalies and happen to grow very quickly, or most of them are just going to be very slow? In the deep sea, they, they are slow growing. Uh, shallow water corals, like the, um, the some of the more charismatic reef building species, um, like the acroporids, can grow at 10, 15 centimeters per year, which is very fast. Um, but in the deep sea, most of these corals are going to be growing at linear extension rates of, you know, maybe f few millimeters per year, maybe maybe a centimeter at most. Um, it's really dependent on kind of the surrounding food supply and uh, and where they're situated. Do you think it'd be possible to grab this rock here, or is that a little too isolated? Yeah. Yeah. We have 15 meters left on that move. Do you want to let it stop? Stop ship. Okay. Bridge now. Hold position. It's a nice size. This one, that's just between my jaws just now, yeah? Yeah. Cool, Perfect. thanks. Good job. You want to zoom on it? Or? It might be a little bigger than we expected. No, I think it might fit. Take a look at it in, uh, in a close-up if we can before we stow it. Okay. Yep. I think that'll fit just nicely in, in one of the small boxes on the starboard side. Yeah, as long as uh, we keep it vertical in there, I think it'll go. Yep. Can you spin it again? Uh, yep. Dark angled rock. Happy? Yep. All right. Ready for sampling solo? Yes, please. Thanks. So we're we're gonna aim for one of the small inboard uh, compartments. Okay. Um, if Wait. something gets, something might creep out a little bit because there, there's that float. Yeah, that black that, bla that black coral has been, yeah has been yeah out for uh, it, it's a large colony so it, it's it'll stay though it's, okay, it's heavy great. it's not a it's not a super floaty it's just a modestly fo floaty <laughs> okay <laughs> that's all the way out for you 
Honestly <laughs> floating. Some people are wondering How big about. Would we say that rock is? Uh, probably 15 centimeters. Um, yep. So this one is good. Huh? Yep. That's. Uh, yeah. That's B. That that's pretty good. Okay. Lovely. Oh. So that goes in B. Boop. In the starboard box. And sample number. That uh, would be zero one zero or zero one one. Zero one one, thank you. And a one five three dash zero one one. Zero one one. Yeah, so again those are not bones that we're seeing uh on the first screen there. Those are some fallen sponges. I know they look very, very much like bones, but that's not what they are. Nick, can you give a description on that rock, Nick? Yeah, so um, around 15 centimeters, um, angular, uh, dark uh, covered, dark, dark colored, uh, possible ferromanganese crust. Uh, not sure how thick that would be until we cut it open. Steve, where can we get a temperature uh, reading? So, um, if you pull up Grafana, oh. okay, this will show all of the ROV sensors here, and okay. here is your temperature reading right now, and the past one hour. So it looks like the current temperature where the ROVs are right now is 2.1 degrees Celsius. Nice and chilly. Nice and chilly. <laughs> Just how we like it. Yep. I'm still waking up over here. I'm working <laughs> on my coffee. I need some cold water. Maybe not that cold though. It's a little too cold for me. So again, we are currently exploring um, an unexplored guillot. Um, we have mapped it before previously, but this is the first time that anybody has explored it with a ROV. And so we're doing some sampling as well as exploring. Um, I think that we may have some repeat dives going on. I know that we have a question the chat somebody's asking we have been to this area before to Johnston Atoll um, are we doing any repeat dives and are we going to be checking up on any like coral regrowth or anything like that uh, Steve I feel like you might know the answer to that question that is not part of our cruise plan where um, we're going to be diving on exclusively on features that have never been explored before um, last year uh, we had uh, Nautilus did two cruises to Johnson Atoll. One was a mapping only cruise and one was a mapping and ROV cruise. And um, the mapping cruise mapped a bunch of seamounts that have not yet been dove on. So that's going to be our plan is to follow up on that effort. Um, this, this I believe, is one of those uh, seamounts, but we also have some other plans. Our, our goal generally was to work uh, on unexplored seamounts and even unmapped seamounts in some cases in the northwest parts of the Johnson Atoll, e easy. But um, uh, no, thank you. But we're going to be working <laughs> probably all throughout while we work around some weather that's coming through the area. Right. 
Okay, science, anything else here? Nothing else, we're ready to move on. Thank you. Okay. By your leave, ROV. Um, yeah, I'll keep observing. Okay. And then we're getting in the chat an adorable question from a three-year-old. Have you found anything yet today? No. <laughs> <laughs> My personal favorite thing that we've seen so far is the fish that showed us his butt. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> that's my personal opinion, but we've definitely seen plenty of coral, plenty of sponges, lots and lots of different species. As Steve was saying a few minutes ago, the diversity around this area is just pretty breathtaking. So lots of different types of um, sponges and coral for the most part. And on all the sponges and coral, there's a lot of associated biodiversity too. That's um we call them associates, but um, you know they, they could be anything from uh, predators, uh, sea stars, for example. Haven't seen any seals. Oh, we're talking about a fish. fish. Is that yeah. the, the butt fish? I think that was maybe the same <laughs> fish. <laughs> Sorry. Scientific name. <laughs> it heard me talking about it. Orion ship. Happy to move. Bridge, knife. Black coral back. Two copies. five zero meters, two six zero. We're going to time our uh, mm -hmm. our good Atlanta swing. Yeah. Five zero. Two six zero. Hmm. Okay, so that move came in at sixteen hundred UTC. We'll see how long it takes Atlanta to move. It's getting steep here. I I didn't expect it to be so steep, but the contours are. Uh, yeah, same. I just realized that. This is actually not even the steepest part of the dive. Between five and six is where we kind of rise up to the summit of the Gio, where it's, uh, you know, possibly uh, moving up to like a carbonate cap. But this all looks still very thoroughly volcanic. Definitely. Mm -hmm. We hypothesize a carbonate cap, but it could be something else. We'll see. Either way, I expect it to be pretty heavily crusted. Oh, can we uh, take a little bit of a look over here? Yeah. Good eye. Yeah, you know, there's three corals right in that spot. What is that? Mm, oh, you're on mute. Maybe a small, small sponge. Go for zoom. Awesome. Okay. Oh, so Ooh, we've got a, a trifecta, yeah. Wow. We've so got colorful. a Chrysogorgia colony with a uh, squat lobster. And a Victorgorgia colony. That's the purple one in the middle. And a Paramariceid on the right-hand side, which is three different families in one shot. We have uh, pretty good samples in this area of the the latter two, uh, the Victor Gorgia and the, the Paramaricea. Mm -hmm. There's a rock okay, go on. in the bottom right too. But I think that was the first Victor Gorgia of the dive, but I could be mistaken. Uh, we'll have to go back to our notes later and look. Steve, are there any rock pens on the sampling list? Um, yeah, they're always potentially of interest. We sampled quite a bit last year and if we see any, maybe. Okay, there was one in the bottom right of that shot, but. Um, um, I'm going back to that spot if you want to look again. Oh. I didn't what was it? I didn't see the rock pen. Can you point it out? 
Uh, it was to the bottom right of the frame with the okay. Chrysler Gorgia. Oh, that yeah. should oh, be I right. See it. I yeah. see it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Right about here. Uh, let's get a zoom video. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. Yeah, wow. rock pen. We, we, did, we did collect some of these in previous years, so I think n okay. we don't have to look at this one in particular, but that, uh, yeah, as we, unfortunately with rock pens, we can't always easily take a part of them. We have to take the whole thing. Um, so we want to just take a, make sure we um, look for specimens, look for multiples of specimens before we try to start taking whole ones to the best of our ability. Yeah. Uh, Victor Gorgia, um, the Paramuraceidae, uh, which is, well, the, the taxonomy on that is, is dated. Um, so Victor Gorgia, uh, Chrysler Gorgia, and um, Paramuracea. Yeah. But there are some right here, some uh, bubblegum corals. That Go for zoom. There's another individual from this uh, Chrysogorgia coral. I think there's the same type of coral we saw earlier, similar associate, uh, Gastroptychus or Europtychus, whatever they're calling it these days. There's an Aridogorgia colony, uh, bamboo coral. And to the left, there is a bubblegum coral, which used to be called the family Paragorgia Day, but now it's um, been recently revised, and bubblegum corals no longer have their own family. They belong into a family with the other precious corals. So that they're named that way because uh, when the polyps close, they will often appear lumpy, like you know, stuck bubblegum. Um, so they that they acquired their common name that way. And there's a nice uh, brittle star associate on the colony as well. They're often okay, uh, common associates of octocoral fans because uh, they're thought to be in some sort of commensal relationship where uh, the brittle star might help out in some ways uh, the, the coral by keeping it free of parasites or predators or debris while as where the, the brittle star gets a really nice uh, uh, location to hang out in the water column a little bit higher up above the rest of the rocks. So Atalanta is just starting to move it looks like. Okay. Um, I think I'll put in another move so we can keep moving. Sure. Bridge nav. Okay. We can add another five zero meters to that two six zero. Thanks. Did you get a time on that? I mean, it's like six minutes. I think you were right. Okay. Yeah. It's I don't the think same it for both yeah. vehicles then, regardless. So the drag, the dominant drag force is going to be the cable then, not the vehicle. Which tracks? Yeah. All right. Let me see here. Nick, nice. it looks like we have a. Red Gorgia colony. Can we take a look at the sea star? Uh, yeah. That's right here. It looks. Maybe it's Ooh. predating on something. These corals and sponges really like this lumpy terrain because it creates a lot of current. Um, Current, uh, current accelerated uh, or topographically accelerated Go current flows. Yeah, so this is a predation event. Or maybe it was a predation event. Yeah. There's no 
there, this is an old bamboo coral um, that is now completely denuded of polyps, probably by this sea star. <laughs> the tuckered out sea star. <laughs> yeah, the scene of the crime. Yeah. Is it? I'm sorry, I'm seeing a plume of something coming out of that coral. Is it spawning? The one above the oh, sea star? Oh, that would have just been a little plume from the thrusters of the vehicle. Uh, likely. Yeah. So this is a goniasterid star uh, as well. They're common coral predators. Not much more to eat there, but maybe it's looking for its next meal. There's also one of these, this, this coral here is a black coral and we've sampled it quite extensively in this area. Um, we were calling it stichopathies, but uh, it's probably not stichopathies, it's probably something else. Um, but that what? work is still, still ongoing. Well, this, uh, this really nice Ritogorgia colony here is... Go uh, Possibly Ritogorgia magnus borealis. It's got the the right uh, helix diameter. You can keep the you can keep the zoom small, and I'll float up it. Okay. Well, our friend and colleague Delta Dan has a really interesting way of imaging these. Uh, he likes to look <laughs> down the long axis. It's I I try all the time, and it's really hard. Yeah. Delta Dan. Delta Dan. <laughs> Yes. Okay, go wide. But you can see there's a there was a couple of associates in there. I think there was a might have been a squat lobster, um, as well on the other Eridogorgia colony or uh, Chrysogorgia. Oh, there's a really nice Chrysogorgia colony right here. This too. Oh, this yeah. might be a, a species we haven't seen yet. This is reminiscent of Chrysogorgia um, abluto, which is a very th long, thin. It's very sparsely branched um, bottle brush. Yeah, so video for these long ones, if I end up at the base, I can often just float up them so you can keep the zoom tight. Beautiful. It, it okay. is really, th this is Love a that. very unusual morph though, because Go for zoom. From, from here down, it looks normal. That's and good. And as you float up, I'll make another note because this Chrysogorgia branches in a very unusual way at the top. Um, so it bifurcates here, which is very, very strange. They don't normally do that. Um, okay. It's highly unlikely that that's Go a result of a new species. Uh, it's probably just that it's been damaged in some way, such that the coral then branches uh, and starts to grow in, in two um, identical parallel bifurca bifurcating uh, uh, bottle brushes. So it very, looks very similar to a Bluto. This is quite a sheet flow. How much is left in the move? 15. Beautiful. Would you like to... That's good. Keep going or stop? Uh, we can do whatever science wants. Science. No, we, can, we can keep going unless... Uh, keep going. Yep. Bridge, no? We can add another five zero meters to two six zero. And then after that, I think we want to, um, how far away from where it starts to tighten, things start to tighten up a bit? Uh, after waypoint five, it'll get steeper, so we can do shorter moves. Uh, yeah, we'll just yeah. make sure we settle out before then. Great. Yeah, it'll get a little flat right before it gets steep again. Okay. So we're looking at a polyopagon sponge here. Uh, in the center, and then on the left-hand side, there's a small unbranched bamboo coral, and then also a Chrysogorgia golden coral on the right-hand side, and then uh, a brittle star at the base of that polyopagon colony. One of the perhaps free-living brittle stars, not associated with a, a coral or sponge. They they occur, but they're very rare. Steve, would you mind telling us some more about? 
sea stars? Like, of course, we've seen a couple of them down here in the deep sea. What is the difference between these deep sea sea stars versus ones that live? We're starting to move sort of across um, the slope. Very little, actually. They're, they're the same like taxonomic group, so the asteroidia. Sort of the direction I they're uh, mostly Just predatory. It's, sort of, um, it's not really what we're seeing in the bathymetry. However, there are like some it. sea stars that are uh, detritivores, or they eat in fauna and the sediments. Um, obviously, we're not going to see very many of those here because there's not as much sediment. But uh, you know, most of the sea stars we see here are predators, uh, like sea stars okay. in shallow waters. And when you're talking about sediment, you're talking mostly about uh, carbonate sediment. Yeah, yeah. Most of so most of the sediment here. Oh, there's a hollow star right Ooh. there. Fishy. Ooh. Most of the sediment here is um, oh, biogenic. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Good panic. But uh, most of the sediments, if you take a handful of sediment and you dry it out, it's a lot of foraminiferin shells and things that just sink and settle and, and fill in crevices. I don't think you get much terrestrial sediments out here this far. Yeah, so all of the the sediments that we're looking at right now is not it's not it's not I mean you might call it sand if you're looking at grain sizes, but it's not sand not so by based. origin, yeah. 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 It's all shell material from foraminiferans plankton. You'll find more sand at higher latitudes where the uh, carbonate uh, will dissolve. Yeah. At uh, colder temperatures, and sometimes when you go into the deeper ocean uh, in the Abyssal Hills, you actually find clay deposits uh, from windblown sand in certain areas. Huh. Interesting. Some more glass sponges, bubblegum coral. Go for zoom. We'll get a quick one on this before the plume catches up with us. Yeah. It's a glass sponge. Mm -hmm. Tough to tell if it's it's stocked or not. Go away. Uh, may or may not be. Sometimes the stalk can be very small. Sometimes that's attached directly to the rock. So we have somebody who's curious to know more about what are the primary factors influencing the formation and distribution of underwater rock formations on the ocean floor? That is a humongous question, and Nick, I'm going to toss that one over to you. <laughs> yeah. Because I um, can answer it. Well, as you can see from uh, most of the rocks down here, their uh, composition is uh, what we call basalt. And uh, basalt, um, in contrast to most continental rocks, has much lower silica content uh, and enriched in elements like iron and manganese, which give it that darker color. Uh, so besides that, we'll also see limestone, um, which is going to be compacted and cemented um, carbonate debris uh, that forms its own rock unit. And you can see those on, um, in certain parts of the world, land deposits. Uh, not land deposits, but uplifted uh, tectonics uh, on land. Um, so I would say the uh, uh, primary factor um, for basalts themselves is going to be uh, eruption uh, volume, um, which is going to give it its, its shape. Your pillow basalts are going to have much slower eruption rates. Uh, and then you'll see these sheet flows that we're looking at recently. 
uh, that are indicative of a higher volume of melt. And, uh, yeah. Okay, go on. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Did we identify that coral? Yeah, that's a Paragorgia mm -hmm. bubblegum coral. Yeah, it's a... Uh, shares, I don't know if willingly, but it shares its colony with uh, a zoanthid, uh, which is a, a hexacoral, a type of, probably more similar to anemone type animal, but it's a colonial organism. It's um, called a zoantherian. And uh, they're known parasites of uh, coral, uh, octocoral colonies, but um, their, their taxonomy and identifications are pretty poorly known in this area. Are those the ones that are called gold corals? They c same group, yeah, okay. yeah, same group. We've pulled one up where it was like thousands of years old and like layered like tree rings. Yeah. It's like three inches across or something at the trunk. Yeah, wow. they that that particular genus and species, Kula mana can make very uh, can make its own skeleton, unlike most zoanthids. Um, wow. It can secrete its own skeleton glow in the dark. Yep, it does have some bioluminescent properties. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but it can secrete its own skeleton and it usually parasitizes a very specific species of bamboo coral, uh, which gives that, that kind yeah. of that structure that bamboo coral creates here. substantial longevity. We take a look at the sponge at nine o'clock. Yeah, uh, yeah. We just ended a move. Okay. Put another one in or science anything uh, to... Let's chill out for a second and cool. get uh, I, it doesn't look like uh, Atalanta is that far behind. No, I think we're pretty close. Science, anything here you'd like to uh, sample? I uh, mean, if we could poke some of these smaller rocks we might be able to pick <laughs> something. Yeah, may okay. maybe. Video go for yeah. zoom. It's a beautiful sponge. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a nice sponge. Nice zoom, too. go a little wider. Good. Nice. I'm gonna reset the DVL again if you're okay with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Alright, well, uh, can we sit down and look at a rock? Yeah, uh, right here. Go. Do you want to go wide and look at some more rocks or? Yeah. What do you think? Here or nearby? Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, we might have something over, about over here. Anything okay. over there we might be able to grab? Yeah. Um, it might be a quick one, um, and then we might have to take off. It depends on how fast Atalanta is moving. No problem. Um, you ready, Karen? For yes. something? Yeah. I, fi I figured. So it looks Finger nice on right the pulse. here, if that's possible. Yeah. Okay. We'll land right here. Circle it again? Yeah. Okay. Not sure. It uh, might be a little okay. too big. Uh, I got to get out of here. This is not a good place for the camera. Sorry. I'll try right. again. Can you circle again? Or yeah. are we on top of it? Uh, this one might do right here. I, uh, I'm not sure about the size, but. Uh, okay. The one right next to the camera lenses. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. I love it. Sorry. Like Make it as hard accepted. as possible, yeah. please. <laughs> no, it's okay. This is, this is on me. I'll find a spot. Nice. Okay, that's better. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that rock looks bigger from this angle, though, no? Yeah, it kind of does. Oh. We'll see. This one, yeah? Uh, or not? I was looking at the one below that. Underneath I'm not sure, it. yeah. This one. One more down. One more down, yeah. One more down. Might have to back up a little. 
One more down? The one under the porch. Yeah. Okay. Just barely. Um, while I'm moving, can you get uh, Herc lined up in Atalanta's camera? Absolutely. We're getting an excellent question in the chat. So we're doing some rock collections, obviously, um, and we have somebody who loves rocks themselves, and they're wondering, do any of us ever get a chance to keep the rocks or any of the other collections for our personal, our personal collection? The answer to that is no. Um, our, the goals of this cruise... So I was looking at this one here, but that might be too large. I don't know if uh, this might be a little bit more feasible. I'll give this one a go. Or if that's part of the mm -hmm. rock unit. The second the vehicle's hopping around. Mm -hmm. I think the current might be behind you too, which is yeah, pushing you into the... Yeah, it's not great, yeah. but that's okay. We'll get it. Yeah, that's no. that's hard on there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's keep moving then. Sure. We'll we'll poke poke another site. <laughs> okay. Science poke. No, we don't get to keep any of the rocks. We don't know. We don't need to. We don't get to keep keep any of the biology. Um, this is a uh, national marine monument, marine national monument. So um, all of the samples and things have to be accounted for um, because this is a, a managed area. And um, we have, as a result of our permitted activities here, uh, to find repositories for geological and biological specimens um, before and after we're done working on them uh, with our science. So um, the geological specimens will be deposited at the University of Rhode Island's Marine Geological Samples Lab and the biology samples at the Harvard University Museum of Comparative Zoology. And they will be available to request by any scientists anywhere in the world. And uh, they will be housed there in perpetuity. I've heard that like, like theft of space rocks in NASA is just like rife. <laughs> <laughs> We, we had a NASA rock uh, scientist out here once. We had That's the so NASA cool. Cosmic Dust Best Curator. curator. <laughs> Best very, job name. Very memorably, we had that person. Not as good of a title as Planetary Defense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 no, it's not in the news a few years ago. Planetary Defense Scientist or something like that. Is that a sponge covered in hydrates? On the lower right? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, sponge covered in some schmutz. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but it's technically <laughs> <turn>. Yes. <laughs> Very scientific over here. Ready when you are. Are we still looking for a rock? Um, let me just get out in front again. Yep. Yeah, in yeah. The yeah. Same orientation. Uh, at this point, we're pretty stable, though. So if you see a rock that you like, we can go for it. Sure. So it's looking like a little bit sandier, huh? If it's not perfect, we can we can move a little bit, but it, it does start to level out here a little bit before it starts to pick up again. Okay. You yeah. see anything loose on the right there where you see those uh, little debris field? There might be something we can pick. Okay. So I actually have some folks joining from the California Science Center, That's which right. is where I'm visiting from. So hello, Jocelyn. Hello, Karen and everyone else. Um, Jocelyn actually had a question about the, the I guess, claw mechanism that Hercules has. So how many claws does Hercules have and how do they work well, exactly well, for the arm? Um, so Karen, do you want to field that one? Yeah, I mean, so the, there's two more or less arms on the front of the ROV. Um, they're both hydraulically driven. Um, and they work just by, you know, um, opening, close, closing some rams. Um, there's nothing really that complicated about it. Yeah, like kind of like small tractor parts, really. 
Like if you see like a <laughs> the sleet, the, the things that operate like a loader on a tractor, just quite small. And what's currently on the claw? Actually, is it coral cutters right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So currently the claw has um, a little blade, two, two blades, so a little snip capabilities to be able to take very small samples, like a little snip of coral instead of taking the entire organism. So there are different um, claws that can be switched out. Those look like they're that arm. to you? Possibly. You know, one of these maybe? Possibly. It might be connected. They could be breakable, but I don't, I don't know what that means. It could be yeah. crust. <laughs> if, it, if, it's, if it's breakable, it's, if it's breakable, crust, then it's, yeah. yeah. Or highly old. They very, look very lobby. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's try it. I mean. <laughs> Great. Poke some rocks. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're interested in poking in this vicinity. Yeah. That Is that too large right here? Got it. Oh yeah, that, You're that, that might be better. Not sure if this guy is too large, but. That yeah. one. Okay. I'll give it a go. That might so be it might be far. a little bit of stretch. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were looking at these two right here. Yeah. The meanwhile. Those two, okay. Got it. From a distance, they look like they might be loose, but close, maybe not so much. We're set on a rock behind us, so if you end, the vehicle will be a little bit bouncier. No worries. And then about how many repositories does Hercules have currently? Oh, yeah. Nice. Solid snag. All right. Let's, uh... Where is this going? Starboard bow box, ARD. Okay. Do we want to get a little 360 on it? Rotisserie. Sure. Rotisserie. <laughs> rotisserie. rotisserie rock. Rotisserie the rotisserie chicken. rock. <laughs> Good enough to lick. Um, <laughs> You know. One more turn. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, what right. size would you say that is? About 10 centimeters? Yeah, that's about 10 centimeters. Are we going starboard? Yeah, starboard box. So there was a viewer that I was asking how many repositories. I don't know the exact number, but we can see now that... Uh, we, we used two primary repositories for physical specimens. Um, Sorry, Bronwyn, that was starboard which? A, a or D. Okay. A is the closest and D is the farthest. Okay, thanks. And that sample is 012? Yes. Thank you. Nice. Um, but we also have all kinds of repositories for um, digital data too, like mapping data. Um, R to R for mapping products, um, as well as we have repositories for um, special cruises we might do. For example, in some years, like when we worked off of the California sanctuaries on the West Coast, um, some specimens were split and sent to uh, the Santa Barbara County Museum of Natural History and the Cal Academy. So we do have special cases like that and sometimes. And different cruises use different uh, repositories as well, right? Uh, it depends on what the, yeah, what the, the goals and, you know, uh, yeah, funding mechanism is for, for different cruises. With these types of cruises that are funded by the OECI and NOAA Ocean Exploration, we kind of use the no standard Nautilus uh, repositories that are open, open accessible. Well. Well, well, well. Well. Anything well. else here, science? Ready to go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, I just need to get a little stretched out first. That sounds um, great. Is it going to, we've got how much more of the flat stuff? Uh, probably about 100 meters. Oh, okay. 120. So we could do another, like, two moves and then hang out and get it settled before we go steep. Sounds great. Great. Okay, I'm going to get stretched out a little bit, okay. and then I'll say when. Cool. Actually, 
actually, by the time you get over there, if I put in a move now, we'll probably. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, because it, it takes a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Bridge now. Six minutes, in fact. Uh, five zero meters, two six zero, please. Also, Gabby, we've been going actually 0 0.3 knots. So oh, sweet. as we go up the slope, if Yellow. we're going too fast, we could drop down to yeah. two. Alrighty. We could probably start at two. Um, yeah, just going up. They're going to want to, there'll be lots of good stuff to look at. Yeah. That's what I think anyways. That'll I would so agree. Good. So good. Maybe. So Maybe. <laughs> so Nick, a few minutes ago, we were going over uh, like a sheet flow, but there was, it was broken up by bands of rubble. Do you think that the sheet flow, do you think the rubble was there and the sheet flow went over it? Or do you think those were like uh, formed at the same time? That's a good question. Um, I, I think the rubble came over it, but um, it could have happened either way, to be honest with you. Uh, it could have been some kind of tectonic uh, event that, you know, uh, uh, happened after the, the eruption, where you had a little bit of faulting happening, uh, where the rubble uh, covers the sheet Can you give Atalanta a heading of 260? Yeah. Cool. Yes. So it could have been after. Could have been after. Yeah. Interesting. I just saw the smile again. <laughs> Which is really nice. So the smile Gabby's talking about is on the back deck. There's <laughs> the two fenders and then the attachment points for Atalanta. Looks like a little smile. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that yesterday. Yeah. It's not an accident. It's so darling. It's not. <laughs> it. One of the deck chief's uh, most important jobs is to make sure that it has a different face every day. <laughs> Different expression. Okay, that move is underway. Sweet. Does the smile get bigger with more rocks that we collect? <laughs> <laughs> the deck chief's not a geologist. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you could encourage that. Yeah. Can we uh, can we look at this while we're waiting? This yeah. stick here. Yeah. I'm happy to look at sticks. <laughs> and rocks. Need some uh, some eyebrows up there above, above the eyes for uh, some <laughs> more character. Yep. <laughs> can do some angry faces. <laughs> Zoom a little more. And that's stick. That's a nice stick. Yeah. Sponge stick. Sponge stock. Yeah. Some maybe zoanthids on it as well as uh, some ophiuroid brittle stars. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, go away. So you were saying earlier, uh, Science Steve, that uh, <laughs> the sponges are made up of silica? Silica? Silica. Silica. Yeah. And then what about coral? Are they made out of the same thing or something else? Something else? No, we have not yet found a silica coral. Um, no, most of them are made out of calcium carbonate. Um, although the amount of calcium carbonate can vary greatly. Uh, there's different minerals of calcium carbonate um, in different groups of corals. Stony corals are largely aragonite, um, aragonitic. What is that? Anyone else see that? Or no, is it, no, it's just, it, no, never mind. It's just <laughs> mine. I was looking at that and I thought, it's only 6 a.m. <laughs> got a long day ahead. Um, yes. Looks like an anemone, kind of. Yeah, it looks like a, circular thing. Well, Can the thing is, the a lot please? of... Sure. Um, Bridge, now. A lot of... Uh, position. Animals that live in the sediments will alter their surrounding uh, the substrate. The over the top of Atalanta. I see that. Yeah. And so you'll, you'll notice there's some, like, slightly whiter or brighter mounds in the sediment here uh, that could indicate that there's info. So actually, can you rotate Atalanta counterclockwise, so to the left? Gone. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
stop there. Hmm. So for those of you that are just joining us, welcome. Uh, we are currently uh, doing an ROV dive for an uh, unnamed guillot or seamount. Uh, currently our depth is I believe just under 2,000 meters. Yeah, it looks better. It looks better. Making our way slowly up the seamount, and uh, we are in the Johnston Atoll region. So I'll just, you want me to keep it at 20 now instead of 15? So I think with the big snatches. All right, coming up. I, di I didn't finish the discussion earlier about um, coral skeletons, but yeah, so stony corals, which we don't often see down here. I think I've seen one cup coral All the right. whole dive. That's about 20. Uh -huh. uh, or aragonitic, but most of the octocorals we're seeing are the sea fans, um, and, and some of the other corals too are uh, calcitic or high magnesium calcite. Uh, minerals in their skeleton, which is um, less prone to dissolution at these depths. Um, so they're capable of tolerating a little bit deeper, deeper depths. But um, the, the calcium carbonate elements of a skeleton can either be structural, um, you know, providing the the structure of the axis and the branches, or, or they can be microscopic. There's um, small uh, calcium carbonate shards called sclerites that are embedded in the tissues of the coral. So you're saying that most deep sea coral are going to have the softer makeup because it's it's better for them in these depths. Well, it's pressure? a it's just a different it's just a different evolutionary lineage. Okay. Um, but but different uh, lineages use different. Um, uh, calcium carbonate minerals too. Some there there have been some octocorals. Uh, there's been some mineralogical papers that have been published on octocorals in the genus Candidella, I believe, that actually use different minerals in their skeleton. So they'll use for their bases an aragonitic mineral, and then in the branches they'll use um, a calcitic mineral. That's interesting. Yeah, which is very confusing. Um, but that work was done back in the, I want to say, early 2000s um, by some colleagues at the Smithsonian Institution. But I would say that the vast majority of uh, work that's been done on um, uh, calcium carbonate mineralogy uh, has not been incorporated as much into the taxonomic descriptions of corals, which I feel like should be important, but it's not always Appreciate included. Appreciate the uh, coffee break. That was great. Um, <laughs> Thank you. you know, so most of the, that work has been done on folks who are interested in aging corals, um, because that, that's something they have to take into account. There's a lot of work to be done on the geologic perspective as well with uh, carbonates, specifically mm -hmm. going back in time. We see um, a high concentration of aragonite and lower concentrations of calcite. And we know that they're polymorphs of uh, the same chemical formula, uh, but not sure why um, we, we, we see so much aragonite uh, going back in the, uh, in the rock record yeah. and, and not as much calcite. There's been some... Uh molecular clockwork that's been done on the corals and kind of trying to rectify that, justify that with um, oceanographic changes over time or and geological changes over time and how you know, chemistry of seawater based on proxies uh, has maybe influenced which corals are more successful at certain in certain geological eras, geological periods. You know. Yeah big picture type stuff, but it's um, it's difficult, difficult to tell. Would you say a lot of that is because uh, we don't know the conditions of, of uh, those time periods? Uh, I think there's, there's uncertainty, but there's also um, very poor fossil record for so softer corals, especially. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
So most of what we know is from you know, stony corals that are you know, preserved well in, in the fossil record. So again, at this unnamed um, seamount, we are exploring the biological as well as the geological aspects of this area. Um, we've been seeing quite an array of um, coral as well as sponges, and Steve uses a fancy word to describe what's living on the coral. What is it? Associates. Or associates. Some associates. Lots of associates on the coral. So um, squat lobsters, um, different types of sea stars, I, we saw a few brittle stars down here too. So very, very diverse um, in terms of the biology. And we're also trying to take a look at some of the rocks that make up this area too. So uh, Nick is interested in finding rocks that have an irregular shape, lots of crust, and they taste good. <laughs> We're specifically looking for certain mineral phases, which unfortunately we can't uh, we can't figure that out until we pull them up and cut them open and do some processing. Uh, initially, we'll look at thin sections, look for uh, traditionally uh, datable phases, uh, mineral phases. Uh, we like to look for biotite, amphiboles, plagioclase. Uh, those are common in marine settings. Um, if we have those, then we have a higher likelihood of uh, being able to uh, to date these rocks. And uh, it's surprising how, how little material you have um, left over after crushing, sieving, grinding. Um. Yeah, okay. Any chance uh, we can zoom on this thing, whatever it is, down just on the tip of the camera now? I, I don't think so. It's been very inconsistent. Yeah. Do you want to do a scoop? Mm. Sorry about that. I was off SPL for a second. Um, I was exclaiming about things. Yeah. <laughs> What's the status of the ship moving? Uh, we got 15 meters left. Okay. We could stop Is this at any time. What we were zooming at? Yeah. No, it's just sponge rubble. I just wanted to double check. Okay. Go ahead. Um, we have a we have a request to maybe scoop uh, some of this. Gravelly debris. Sure. Okay. Bridge now. What about over here? Okay. In the bottom or left over yeah. here. Uh, well, no, that looks bigger. Yeah, because this will swing oh, closer to us. Yeah, yeah. So I it's think it's going to be good. Kind of aiming yeah. for here, but okay. the scoop, um, the mesh scoop, uh, that's. Yeah. You know. Do you need to stow that in a box or can you put it back on the porch? No, it's going to go in a box. This okay. is a single use item. Okay. Um, so it'll probably end up going in uh, the right-hand side of the toolbox, I would imagine. That's fine. Just pick the biggest patch that you see, the most the most okay. dense patch. I think maybe here is probably a good place to try. It's been very inconsistent, though. Yeah. Mm. You just want another megalodon tooth, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Who got a megalodon tooth? Fossilized megalodon tooth. We don't want to start any rumors here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was that on, was that Rob last year? Uh, well, I don't know who collected it last year, but it was in a scoop. We, we didn't know we were scooping it. Oh, it was so <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So it was. It was must have been very early. Yeah. We didn't even have the mesh scoop on the board at the time. It was the plastic uh, the ice ice scooper. Oh wow! And uh, got just got lucky. Or there's a lot more megalodon teeth out in the environment that we're aware of. We're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so you want one that's got a lot of nodules in it? Yeah, just you know, pick pick the greatest density, and maybe we'll we'll do a couple okay. scoops and just to aim for picking up a couple of these patches. And Karen, when I sit down, I'm usually doing a stick lock with a forward, a down, and an auto head. 
because otherwise the vehicle tends to do a little twisting. Okay. Hello, Kate in Michigan. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to retract the camera here. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, we got... Uh, Yeah. So it's hooked with two hose clamps, one on the front and one on the underside that you can't really see. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little bit of hemp line wrapped around the mesh. Okay. Probably just set this down and get a better grab. Nice. nice. We try not to make too many positively buoyant scoops. Mm -hmm. And you have plenty of time here. Looks like everything's settling out nicely. Okay, awesome. Um, I think they're going to start here, actually. Yeah, it's easier to put the scoop there. Yeah, I think the scoop might, the, the hockey puck might stick out a little bit from that box. From the forward box? Yeah, but the, mm -hmm. the, the scoop, the mesh scoop should be inside. Yeah. Uh, we'll try... We'll try to keep it um, inside the best we can. Yeah, we'll see how the we'll see how the box sits, but in in the future we'll want to modify that handle a little bit so we can make sure we get a good seal on the box. Okay. Otherwise, things tend to float out, and warm water tends to get in. So, is this a biological sample? No, or I mean you're worried about the other box. The other, the other sample, yeah, okay. the other sample on the other side of the box. We'll see yeah. if it gets, if we can get it all the way in. Yep. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to putting it in the starboard box. It's been done before, but if if you'd rather put it in the forward, that's fine. Um, there's also another type of like we can use the open scoop too. Yeah. Um, which will definitely fit all the way in. Well, uh, Rob likes this scoop um, for okay. for its purposes, and, and it, I know it helps keep the sediment down yeah. on the seafloor where we don't have to deal with it. Yeah, it looks like this scoop is working quite well, and we can use, like, the grip isn't so bad that yep. we can use a shorter handle on it next okay. time. That was my concern with the yeah. shorter handle. No, it works like it's going. Look, works fine. I think I think it should be able to fit fit well inside the forward box. We'll see. So to me, it seemed like the rock people in here kind of like lit up when we discovered that there were these little nuggets. What is the, what's the <laughs> significance of these nuggets? <laughs> yeah, rock people. Rock uh, people. <laughs> that's a good people. question. Um, they're poorly understood. Uh, they can tell you a little bit about the ocean chemistry. Um, they're not my my expertise, Sorry, but uh, I know Rob really I, is interested in collecting them. I think the vehicle might be moving just a little bit. Yeah, no, I was moving off. Okay. It's all good. They do have incredibly long accumulation rates uh, that I do know in the order of uh, millimeters per millions of years. Gotta love those nuggets.
usually when we're talking about ferro manganese, uh, we're either discussing nodules or crust. So this might be a new classification of looking at uh, ferro manganese. Nice. Nuggets. Nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Nugs. Now this is uh, we we start we first started collecting these nugget nugget type rocks in must have been 2021 ish. I remember the the first time we collected them was on 130 NA 134 NA 135. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that number grew. <laughs> I'm, I could do you know the time up, you and the know. date? No, yeah, I do remember. It was uh, <laughs> it was uh, uh, exploring the seamounts uh, south of Chautauqua Seamount. Yeah. What day, though? Uh, <laughs> so let's see. That would have been. I'm not gonna let it go. <laughs> September twelfth. <12th>, no. <laughs> it was a Tuesday. It's, it's always Tuesday. a Tuesday at sea. <laughs> Uh, when was that cruise? It, it was 2021, but yeah, I think it was in the late summer, maybe <laughs> September. The birds were singing. <laughs> <laughs> the air was sweet. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you I've processed a lot of samples on this <laughs> ship before. Helps, you can helps also the pick up and move ahead. Yeah. Um, there is definitely more ahead of us. Yeah, uh, no, no need to be just in this place. Yes, you can move to uh, a better okay. location. Okay, I'm just going to move ahead like a couple feet. Yep. But uh, last year, I would say we obtained the most um, most numbers of these nuggets. Uh, and in some cases, the we were scooping in beds where they would come. The entire mesh bag would come up completely full. Um, sometimes they look like shards, and you know, there's like flakes of crust. But sometimes they do contain a small nucleus of of rock. Um, but they're very heterogeneous beds. I think the little hockey puck is spinning on the shaft. Oh, the shaft is spinning in the uh, in the hose clamps. Totally. Mm. We got some good ones, though. Nice. Yeah, I think, nice. I, think, I think that's enough. I mean, we've got probably half a dozen. So where is this going? Okay, um, this is going to go in the front box on the right-hand side. Um, I'm going to pick up and move us out of this dust cloud so we can see really well. Okay, awesome. I think my little mesh bag is still going to be polluting the Yeah, totally. Maybe some of the movement will clean it out a bit. Because I'll, I'll just get us out in front of uh, Atalanta and that should help. So last night when I couldn't pronounce geode and I was saying geodes, 
Um, have there ever been any deep sea geodes that have been found? <laughs> that's, the, that's a good way to turn that question. You know? yes. 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 Yeah, we found one last year on NA-137. Which was where? Also on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Sunset also at 6.34 p.m. <laughs> it was uh, in Kingman Reef in Palmyra. Ah. Well, oh, there's last a nice, uh, we found that last year on that cruise? <laughs> Tell me more about this you wonderful thing we found. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Otherwise, blank out that cruise. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, uh, well, we sliced open a, uh, no, we, so we didn't have the rock saw on that cruise. We broke the rocks open on that cruise. Oh, wow, okay. Because hmm. uh, we didn't get the rock saw last year and, well, yeah, we didn't get the rock saw until just after that cruise. Okay. And, um, so we broke open some rocks and we found some small white crystals in a uh -huh. in a rock. That's it. Yeah. That was they, the end of the story. They <laughs> they were geode like. It, 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 this was not like a gift shop geode. You know, this is a natural geode. Got it. About how cool. big was it? Uh, maybe a centimeter, a centimeter and a half in That's diameter. Teeny. Yeah. Teeny tiny. So a lot of the times, if uh, basalts have vesicles in them, which are little gas pockets. Uh, those will be infilled over time, uh, and they are a specific type of geode called amygdules. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> amygdules. 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 Is that yeah. backwards or forwards? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amygdules. So you could have calcite or any type of secondary mineralization. Mm. Wow. What was the word for the little pebbles in sand? Um, Oidos? Uids. 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 We need to write all these down. Pretty sure really some of these aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I've got a lot of Only geologists in the band, no one knows. Oh. Yeah. It seems like it would be very amigadols. Uh. No. No, I don't have web on. I just have SPL. Mm hmm. Okay. Is SPL going into the van? Yeah. Nava pumps. Quick shout out to Emmett, Wally, and Max. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for watching. We're just collecting some rock nuggets right now apparently they're very very uh valuable to our geologists on board so they're very excited about them gonna see what what's in store maybe it's some treasure some amigadoles amigadoles you have to write that out for me i don't know omega the other side. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it over the lip. But thanks. Oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> They're cool. Yeah. Wow. Maybe I will be a rock person at the end of this expedition after <laughs> all. Who knows? That's how we, rule, yeah. we reel them in. I feel like I just, just want to grab cool it rocks. by like, the shaft or even the... It's like super... Can I set it down on the ground? Um, yeah, I think it would just be easiest if it's not too much trouble. Interaction problem.
I was just going to grab by the shaft if it, I mean, whatever is covered. That was just, I thought it was in freeze and it wasn't, so the jaws like opened. sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ron, when that was uh, zero one three? Um yeah. Okay. I'll stop. So we do have two ROVs that we are currently using right now. Um the one that is Collecting that sample is Hercules. Um, so Hercules has pretty much all of the equipment um, for collecting the samples and the lights to see everything and the fancy cameras and all that stuff. But there is also Atalanta. Um, so if you take a look on the second screen, it's the above view of Hercules, and that is coming from the second ROV, Atalanta. I think you're good. It's kind of like Hercules's smaller sidekick in a way. Um, so Atalanta doesn't, you know, do any collections or anything like that. It's kind of like Steve said last night, Hercules is dive buddy, right? So we can have an eye on Hercules from above um, so we can know where we are, where, where Hercules is spatially so that um, we're not disrupting the environment and nothing, uh, or also keeping an eye on if anything might be disrupting Hercules, so. Sorry, I'll try to knock it in. Is that ideal? <laughs> How would this? And when I say okay. ROV, um, I am, that stands for a remotely operated vehicle. So there are zero people inside of these vehicles currently. All of the people that are operating these ROVs are on board the ship right now, and they are using a very, very intricate, complex control system to be able to control Hercules and Atalanta, um, even while they're almost 2,000 meters down. Basically, you want like kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, and when we you tried putting the scoop in before on deck, Steve. Okay. Do you think I can go to the bathroom real quick? Um, I, I don't mind going into the starboard box if you, if you feel comfortable putting it onto the starboard side in the on top of the coral there, the large colony, if it's a problem in the forward. Okay, um, we'll give this a try and okay. uh, I will leave that up to Karen if she'd prefer to put it there. Okay. But we can... We can sure give this a try. Video science. It is a nice scoop, though. I'll, I'll, I will it's say that. It's a beautiful scoop. It's a very I, like, nice scoop. I kind of wish I had thought it through to the end. Um, I like the wide mouth. Yeah. Uh, it has a really nice lip on it. St everything stays inside. Not just a large piece of PVC. 